Next up is a stylish way to show your school spirit. Virginia Beach, Virginia. <laughs> I'm the owner of Tones of Melanin. I'm seeking $300,000 for 5% equity into my business. Hello. So, Sharks, for years, thousands of students, faculty, and alumni from historically black colleges and universities, also known as HBCUs, have been underrepresented when it comes to fashion. They're tired of a dazzle t-shirt and polo being their only option for years. Tones of Melanin is here to fill that void. Tones of Melanin has combined streetwear and collegiate wear together to create its own genre of fashion. Today, we have over 40 different HBCU licenses. What makes us so unique is that we come from the community that we serve. Tones of Melanin has become bigger than just fashion. We've become the hub for all things HBCU. So, Sharks, who's ready to change collegiate wear forever? Give it up for my band! Woo! <laughs> some of my signature items. Mark, you have our reversible basketball shorts with pockets. Ladies, like we that. know that we have to have pockets in all items. So if you turn that thing inside out, it's a whole nother pair. I like it. Thank you. Right here, we have our Winston-Salem half-zip windbreaker. In front of you, Mr. Wonderful, is our reversible satin jacket. So if you unzip that, it's gonna turn into a whole nother side. Lori, you have our other windbreaker. It's a full zip. It gives you a, a blast from the past, a 90s feel. And Damon, you also have our reversible jacket from my alma mater, Norfolk State University. Nice quality. How much does it cost you to make and how much do you sell it for? The jacket that you have right there, uh, we get it for 28. We sell it um, on our site for 110. We sell it to the department store for 56. Uh, the reversible shorts right there, we get for 20. We sell it to the department store for 48. They sell it for 100. Um, our reversible jackets, we pay $30 for that. We charge 165. How did you start to do this and, and what's your background? So I designed from early high school into college. It became a side hustle. I began designing for every organization on campus. And I seen there that nothing looked like the things that I was designing. So I decided to start my own brand. At the beginning, I was doing Greek apparel, and then I decided to make HBCU apparel because I seen that there was a bigger need in that community. And how many HBCUs are, you know, historical black colleges, universities, how many of those exist? Depending on the person, some might say 100, some might say 102. And you have 40 licenses already yes. in existence, so that's great. You have almost half of them, right? Yes, um, but the thing is, I've gotten my, um, our license for everybody that allows it. The other schools, they don't have licensing programs in place. They um, don't have licensing yes. programs in that place? That might be an opportunity for you right there. Absolutely. So. A very big, the number one shoemaker in the world has just invested, I think, a couple billion over 15 years to HBCUs. Yes. So this is a very, very hot and fast growing area. I tell you what gets me hot to try to sales. Yes. What do you got? <laughs> Uh, to date, we made 3.3 million since. Whoa! That's over what period of time? <laughs> since 2017. So, what have you sold the last 12 months? The last 12 months, we're at 1.4 million. Wow! Can you walk me through this calendar year sales and potential profits? Um, and how they break down online versus retail? Okay, um, this calendar year so far, we've made about 1.1 million dollars. That equals up, I want to say, maybe 75 percent. Um, the rest are e commerce. Uh, we're currently in Dick's Sporting Goods, Follette with services, uh, wow. 25 of the HBCU bookstores, and also on Fanatics. Literally two days ago, I got a purchase order from Follette for $973,000 for our fall. Wow. Wow. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. how exciting. So, are you going to make money this year? Uh, yes, what we are. What do you think you'll make? To date, we revenue, we have 343000 that we made this year from the one point. Uh, okay, one so point. you've profited about 25% so yes. far. You've got a purchase order for 973 coming in. Yes, sir. Plus, you've got all your other sales that are also, coming. Also, we have more department stores. How are you financing them? Um, we have a really good manufacturer. He allows for us to pay him after we get wow. our payment. Now, this is very creative, and this is what, in our business, we call the factories holding the paper. 
Yes. That's what we called it, right? And a lot of people can learn from this. So you were able to scale because he's doing that. So what would the money be used for then? Um, the money would be used for, uh, we're actually in-house, we have a five person team. So once they get here, we have to tag them all that. I want to go into fulfillment and having a 3PL company, tag it, getting it ready for department stores to make sure that that's well, ready. But you don't have to pay for a 3PL per se. You find a good 3PL, and then you send them the inventory, and then you only pay as they pick sure. a yes. pack. We would also use it for marketing. We've only um, spent $50,000 in marketing. But do you need to spend anything on marketing? I honestly believe that we do because all the stores that we're in, we're not even, we don't have like a key a key place in the store. We actually wanted those other schools that we don't have licensing for, convincing them, hey, choose us. Yeah, marketing won't change their mind. The sell-through will. Okay, yeah. Are you running this yourself? Yes, I'm head designer. I'm talking to the manufacturers. This is your baby and you're running it day-to-day -day, or is there a separate CEO? Or no, I'm day-to-day. -day. You're everything, every, right? Every head, every head. Ashley, I have to ask you this. I mean, your enthusiasm, your confidence is it's huge amazing. thank you and amazing can you please tell us a bit more about your story like where did this come from my grandparents had one of the first african-american beauty supply companies in our area so i seen entrepreneurship firsthand and then when i turned 13 when my mom worked for the ford company subsidiary they left north virginia so i went into hustle mode and it was like i could at least pay for me to go pay for lunch for myself i can pay to get my hair done so it just it became se second nature to be honest you had to take care of you yes yes and it wasn't my mom never asked this i just wanted to help like i know i can do this for myself like i can handle this you don't worry about that mom you're hot stuff you know like yeah, you yeah, yeah, my god you you've got to be putting money in your pocket right now not yet you're um, investing in inventory continuously. everything is going right back into the business you're not making a salary you don't pay yourself anything i pay myself next to nothing i'm still trying to get how I are to, you surviving uh i have a great community my family my mom she believes in me that is really mind-blowing problem for me i don't know much at all about this area I am not really and never have really been much in the apparel world, nor in the sports. And, you know, I understand. It's not really my thing. And so for that reason, I wish you good luck, but I'm out. I appreciate it. Thank you. You are on fire. Thank you. But this isn't a business I know a thing about, sadly enough. Ashley, I look at it as a inventory challenge because the bigger you get, the more capital you're gonna need to hold all these different SKUs and more licenses, more SKUs, more inventory, more capital. That's what I've learned about the clothing business. It's not a business I want to be in, I'm sorry. I'm out. Thank you. The challenge I have is I, I'm, I'm in this area in certain aspects. I, I either advise or own companies in this area. Eastman Golf and Actively Black, FUBU, and then another company you may know of, AACA. I'm okay, American yes, yes, College I'm familiar. League. So I, I would, uh, it would be challenging for me to split hairs like this and I don't think I would be giving you doing a service but I will give you one idea instead of having trying to go to a lot of retailers we've had one representative young man and one representative young woman at each school who are the official sellers of the goods and they get maybe a thousand two thousand dollars worth of product and sell however they want and they've been doing it like that I would highly suggest you do that but at this moment it's a conflict for me I so, appreciate yeah, your advice thank you absolutely I'm out thank you so, Ash, you're a superstar, you're a force of nature, you know your stuff cold. I mean, you didn't back down, you kept a smile the whole time. Nobody phased you even the tiniest bit. <laughs> and, you know, being in the business I am with the Mavericks, I know a few people that, you know, are excited about all this. So I'll make you an offer, we'll okay. see if you like it. I'll give you the $300,000, but I want 15%. Can we do 12? Done. <laughs> That was quick. Good job. You're the best. Thank you're you. the best. That's Thank awesome. You. I'm so excited. Yeah. Thank you. Excited, excited, excited. Thank you. Now go sell some stuff. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Make me some money. I made a deal with Mark Cuban, like one of the biggest sharks there is. I provide a beacon of hope. If I made it and I went to an HBCU, I'm providing the sense of hope for anybody that attended an HBCU.